Hi guys, welcome to Little Wicket Railway. I'm Rob and in this video we're building mounting brackets for servos. I use servos as my point motors and the other day someone asked me how I mount them to the baseboards. I've been using 3D printed mounts, some that I've purchased from Merg, the model electronic railway group, but since getting a 3D printer I've also been printing my own, but again, based on a design that was shared on the Merg forums. But what if you're not a Merg member and you don't have a 3D printer? Well, when I was at the Statfold Barn Model Railway event, John JMC, you might be familiar with his YouTube channel or his work at Digitrains, was showing me his exhibition layout called Halland. And all the point motors on that layout are controlled by servos. I asked him what mounts he used for his servos and he showed me his solution, which was a really simple and effective DIY method using this, a length of U-shaped aluminium. So with John's permission, I'm going to have a go at creating one myself and share the process with you. For this, you're going to need an SG90 servo. These are the standard cheap servos that you can find on Amazon and eBay. Try to look for the ones with metal gears rather than plastic as they tend to be higher quality. You'll need all the screws that come with it too. The mount itself is gonna be made from 15.5 millimeter wide aluminium U-channel. John told me to purchase this from Wix, which is a DIY store here in the UK. Wix is a bit far from me, so I brought some aluminium U channel from B&Q, which was a mistake. This was only 15 millimeters wide, and it turns out that that extra 0.5 millimeters makes a huge difference. So I can confirm that it does need to be the 15.5 millimeter U channel, and Wix is the place to go. You'll need a way to cut the aluminium, and for this, I'm using a hacksaw, and I'll be holding the aluminium in place with a vise. You'll also need a way to drill through your aluminium. I'm using my pillar drill, but I think a normal power drill would also do the job. And you're going to need a 1.5 millimeter drill bit and a larger 3.5 millimeter drill bit that are suitable for going through metal. A file is useful for taking off any sharp edges and you'll need a pencil and ruler for measuring up. And finally, you'll need some stiff wire, such as piano wire, which will pass through the hole on the point tie bar and move it from side to side. You'll also need a pair of pliers to bend it. So let's start turning this aluminium into a servo mount. Step one is to measure out a five centimeter length of the aluminium. Step two is to secure it in your vise and cut off that five centimeter section using your saw. I very rarely work with metal and I've never cut aluminium before, so I didn't know how easy this would be, but it turns out the aluminium is quite soft and it doesn't take long to saw through. It wasn't a perfectly square cut, but that's not too important for these mounts. You're likely to have some rough edges on the aluminium where it's been cut, so be sure to give it a good file to smooth everything down. Step three is to mark where we need to drill the holes. We need two 3.5 millimeter diameter holes at either end. I've marked them a few millimeters in from the ends. These are for the screws that will hold the mount onto the baseboard. Then we need a 1.5 millimeter diameter hole about five millimeters further in from one of the screw holes. This is the hole that the piano wire is going to pass through into the tie bar on the point. These need to be roughly central and on the section of U-channel I'm working with, it already has a center line conveniently marked on it. Step four is to drill the holes. I'm using my pillar drill because I thought this would make my drilling more accurate, but I still managed to miss the center line on one of the screw holes. Again, the aluminium is really soft, so it takes very little effort to go through. You could definitely do this with an ordinary handheld power drill. And don't forget to wear goggles when doing this as tiny bits of aluminium do go everywhere. With the holes drilled, our mount is ready to be used. For this demo, I'm just using a scrap bit of plywood as the baseboard and I've pinned this point onto it. And directly under the center of the tie bar, I've drilled a 10 millimeter hole. We're going to position the mount so that the smaller 1.5 millimeter hole is directly below the center of the tie bar and secure it in place using the two larger screws that came with the servo. I've already marked out the screw holes and drilled a couple of pilot holes to save time. So that's the mount in place. Now I'm going to fix the wire to the servo horn. I've already bent this U shape into the wire so that it will fit onto the horn like this. And then we can just bend down the end of the wire to stop it from coming out. Time to attach the horn to the servo. I've already centered this servo, so I just need to place the horn so that it's pointing straight ahead and screw that in place. Now I can pass the piano wire up through the hole in the tie bar and position the servo in the mount.
You'll need to pass the servo wire underneath the servo to keep it out of the way. John says that he rarely needs to glue the servos in because it's normally quite a snug fit in the mount, but you could always use a bit of glue if you needed to or pinch the aluminium together a bit more to increase the grip on the servo. So that's it all fitted together. Now I'm going to connect the servo to a servo controller and toggle between the throne and close positions to see what happens. And that all looks to be working really well. Obviously, if this was in place on a real layout, you'd just need to trim off the excess piano wire and that would be the point motor installed. So there we go, a really simple way to make servo mounts and the best bit is that it's super cheap. The aluminium cost me just over seven pounds for one meter, which means that I can get 20 mounts out of it and that works out at around 35 pence each. Please check out John JMC's YouTube channel. I'll put links in the show more area below alongside links to all the bits and pieces that I've used today. If you use servos on your layout, then please let me know how you mount them to the baseboards in the comments below. And if you found this useful, then please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. A huge Huge thank you to all my YouTube members and patrons who keep this channel going. It's very much appreciated. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I will hopefully see you again soon.